Liberal Minister of Finance Krista Freeland introduces the Bay Street version of safe injection sites for mortgage debt addicts. That's a line from a good friend, Ron Butler, that I just love. But who are the real addicts? With terrible polling numbers, the part-time finance minister this week introduced an increase to the cap on high ratio purchase mortgages from $1 million to $1.5 million and have also extended the amortizations from the maximum 25 years to 30 years. Now, what does all this mean? Well, for those that don't understand mortgages, high ratio insurance is a tool used by the federal government, CMHC, Canada Guarantee and Sajin, CMHC being the crown corp for the federal government, they allow default insurance on mortgages that don't have 20% down payment because the Bank Act only allows banks to lend up to 80% of the value of a home. This insurance, it's called default insurance, allows lenders to give borrowers more than that amount provided they meet certain criteria and pay this insurance. Now, this insurance is expensive, when you're at the top end of the loan to value spectrum, it's up to 4.1% premium of the total mortgage amount that goes to the federal government or the Crown Corporation that is to cover this default insurance. And this default insurance doesn't protect the borrower, it protects the lender. So if something goes bad, the lender gets paid out from taxpayers who backstop this uh, product from losing any money. So remember how that works. We have gone from a cap of $1 million to 1.5. Now, the extended amortizations price should have been done a while ago. That was always something that folks were looking for. If people did have 20% down payment, they were able to get 30 year amortizations and were restricted in the high ratio space to only 25. So bringing that to 30 years, is a good tool because it allows some affordability room for borrowers to qualify for a higher amount. But let's drill down. Who does this product benefit? Now, from a buyer perspective, it's going to spur demand. It's going to create some inflationary pressure at certain price points. But the reality is, is who's going to qualify for these mortgages at that amount? If people purchase at the top end of that cap, they're going to still borrow $1.375 million plus the insurance premium. That insurance premium is about $56,000 plus a PST on that premium, another $4,500. Let's leave alone the land transfer tax. That's going to be about 45 grand in Toronto. That's a lot of money that's flowing to a Crown Corp, land transfer tax going to government, and who will qualify for this mortgage? You need about $300,000 in household income to qualify for this mortgage. What percentage of Canadians are in that band of income? Not many, okay? So who is this really helping? Real estate, mortgage, and building developers have all been asking to raise this cap. And everybody was hoping that it would go to $1.25 million. Governments shocked everybody by going straight to 1.5. But the question is why? Now, one thing I will tell you is that the big banks have been experiencing a very high delinquency rate amongst higher mortgage balances. We've seen the Royal Bank go from a 10 basis point delinquency rate up to 27 basis points. That's almost triple in less than a year. CIBC is already hitting 30 basis points in delinquency on higher end mortgages. So what does that mean? How does that play into it? Well, here's the catch. CMHC by expanding this cap from a million to 1.5 million in value of homes can now offer bulk insurance to lenders 
And what that means is lenders can now purchase portfolio insurance on homes up to a million five, as opposed to previously only up to a million. It allows lenders to purchase insurance, wrap up these portfolios with this type of hedge, and they're basically transferring the risk from their balance sheet onto the Canadian taxpayer because this insurance is backstopped by the federal government, which in turn is the Canadian taxpayer. So who is the debt addict? Is it the buyer who really can't afford this in this current marketplace? Because we won't see any benefit with this new cap until the next six to nine months when rates come down further. Or is it really the big banks that have lobbied the federal government to help them out as their portfolios are under strain. The stats I gave you are delayed. I'm sure it's worse than what was reported because we do have a three to six month delay on those delinquency stats. The policy doesn't move the needle right now, but what it does do is it helps bail out the big banks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment. I'd be interested to know what you think.